In this video, I'm gonna go through how you can describe a climate graph in geography. In this video, I'm going to break down how you can describe a climate graph in geography. Now, pupils often struggle with these climate graphs and make very regular mistakes with them. So make sure you make notes so you can avoid these mistakes in the future. In one of my previous videos, I went through my four main points for breaking down the graph. So we've got title, trend, axes and data. And you should be looking at those in order. So starting off with the title, what does the actual title of the data tell us? Is there a trend that you can see from the data straight away? What do the axes actually tell us? What are they labelled as? And then finally actually look at the data points. If we look at this climate graph from Manaus in Brazil, um, this can be our first example. Okay, so we've got two types of data on there. We've got the temperature labelled with the red line. And we've got the rainfall or precipitation by the blue bars. This is a very common way of displaying climate data. So you need to become familiar because you're going to see these throughout studying geography at school. The biggest mistake people often make is confusing the rainfall and temperature axes. In this example, the rainfall measurements are on the left, while the temperature is on the right. Various sources often display these differently, so make sure you make note of the different values for each. When looking at climate data graphs, I've broken it down into three different points. So we've got a summary statement. Can you summarize the climate just to start with? Can you then break down the temperature? So is there a trend? Are there any highs or lows? And also state the values. You then also look at the precipitation or rainfall. Again, is there a trend or a pattern? What are the highs or lows? And again, state the values of the data. When we break down this Manaus data, we can see quite clearly that the temperature is very consistent throughout the year. It stays just under 30 degrees all year round, so there's very little variation of temperature. When it comes to the rainfall, again, it's a very high rainfall area, peaking around about 300 millimetres in March. We get lows in August, which is under 50 millimetres. If we take a look at this next climate graph for McMurdo in Antarctica, there is some variation in the temperature in McMurdo, but precipitation is fairly low. The temperature varies greatly throughout the year. January and December, the warmest months, seeing temperatures around minus four degrees. We then see a big decline in temperature through to August, reaching a low of under minus 25 degrees before a warming period through to December. The precipitation is minimal throughout the year with March having the highest of around three millimeters of precipitation. But August, October and November see no precipitation at all. If you want to have a practice at another climate graph, then take a screenshot of this graph showing the climate in Barrow. Be sure to remember all the points we've been through. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like if you found it useful. Please share it, subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the Geography Basics playlist.